Got this sprint in me, curly yellow dancing on me, so she smothered grin on me. And she straight from California, freaky, yo, she wanna be. Tell me she like Inner Voices, welcome back to Sekian Knowing Nag. Yes, sir. I am in college. College has officially started. I ain't got no more break. Back when I was doing these Sekian Knowing Nag videos at the start, I had a break. It was summer break. I had a four month break, actually. Um, so I could upload a lot more, just a lot more in general. Um, now it's going to be limited to once a week. Um, that is if I even get to upload once a week. Um, I'm saying at maximum it's going to be once a week, right? I can only, I can only put out so much. <laughs> I can only do so much with my Saturday. You know what I'm saying? So it's whatever. This visual novel, I think, is almost done. We are getting pretty close to the end, it seems like, based on the conversations that have been had. Um, last episode, bro. Bro. <laughs> bro. What's her name? Addie? Guy had some hot, sweaty, heterosexual sex with Addie. <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, what? No, they did No, they didn't. No, they were just doing some, you know, wholesome bonding activities. They totally weren't making loves or anything. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> I, I know Kia was like, that's my boy, Guy. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Kia totally walked in on that. I know for certain. Uh, walked in on what? Uh, I mean, walked in on uh, wholesome family bonding. Aha. aha. <laughs> I need to stop, bro. They finally did it, though, bro. I'm glad. I can't even hold you. I'm glad. Um, I think we did all the inner voice scenes, but just to make sure, I want to see what happens in scene 7, because I can't, I can't be sure. Uh, da, 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 da. It's been a while, guys. Um... Talking about the um, geography, I think. I think I read this. I don't see why I wouldn't have. Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, this rings a bell. This rings a bell now. I bet. All right, I have no idea what's happening, man. I don't know what the Grand Prince is scheming. He's probably up to no good. Things are about to get messy. Let's go. Deep underground, where no one's voice could reach, beneath all the city's lower tiers, and even lower than that, Randolph was digging holes tonight, as always. The underground madman dug holes while talking with someone who couldn't be seen. You found truth? What? But you found truth? Then, what will you do? But, 
That's truth. During the daybreak, the city shakes my body twice. An earthquake, as if the city itself is rumbling. The first one in recorded history. The magnitude wasn't that great. The first shake couldn't have been felt by more than 10% of the citizens. Those who understood what that shen- Oh my god. <laughs> Give me a sec, guys. Those who understood what that shake meant probably numbered less than 1%. Uh-oh. However, more of them might have felt it. Maybe a little bird told them. Maybe a chill ran down their spines. Those who felt something fearsome. It's over. Many of them probably took it to be a nightmare. It certainly was a manifestation of a nightmare. What the first shake meant. What the first tremor produced. It is huge. It is terror. It is one of the 41 creature- It's over. <laughs> nah, the Grand Prince is raining hell on all of us, bro. <laughs> He's against us, bro. Oh, it's over for us, man. It had materialized after five years. It was an enormous nightmare and a phenomenon. It materialized in the lower tiers. And the second water supply ward filled with water and dull greenery. Oh my god! What is that? Like a monster straight out from Super Mario Galaxy, bruh. Stuck into the center of its back, let me guess. A spring screw, whatever the hell it's called. I <laughs> wait, I got that right. A spring screw. There was a huge silhouette in the center of the second water supply ward. It was a doll. It was something fantastical. A fantasy resembling a horribly warped human. Pulled along by its queer arms, the silhouette destroyed the surrounding buildings like they were mere toys. But it wasn't destroying them on purpose. Hold on guys, hold on, hold on. Let me make sure I got my mic positioned right. Things get disorganized when you use a laptop to record. I right, bet, let's go. It blew away purification engine plants and other buildings just as a result of moving its arms. No will. No intent to kill. Destruction is simply the result of it existing and moving. If anyone saw it, their minds would almost certainly freeze up almost immediately. Their bodies, which should be used to trip. Yeah, terror would tremble. Hold on, I got this, guys. I'm not. I'm not locked in. I'm not locked in. That which brought about terror to all who saw it. This fantasy was equipped with such original terrors: destruction, death, terror, screams. All of those constructed this original being. All who lived in the city were in awe, without exception. A creature. The screw of death sticking out of its back proved that this fantasy was a creature. A terror sleeping in the city. Everyone who lived through the revival 10 years ago knew about them. One of the 41 creatures that devoured people. One of the 41 great terrors that covered the city. Its individual name is Gollum. The creatures. They are a terror given powerful form. Gollum had the greatest physical strength among them. It could easily take tens of thousands of lives. The ultra-high temperatures of its fingers and breath melted everything? It's like a titan? Ain't no way, bruh. I never watched Attack on Titan. <laughs> Y'all can flame me in the comments. Y'all can cook me. Just cook me in the comments. Cries of panic ran out. The city was shaken far more than ever before. That was the second quake. Oh my gosh. The moment Guy heard the voice <laughs> far below him, he shuddered. He's getting PTSD. Ain't no way. He actually shuddered. Guys, nothing makes Guy shudder. Nothing scares him, bro. Nothing physically, visibly scares him. But now it's, it's, it's the revival all over again. He's got PTSD. Oh my god. Nah. He gonna, he's going through it. 
He knew what was beating against his mind. He couldn't not know it. Those who lived in the city all feared it. Even his fingertips shook. Oh my god. He couldn't stand. Even breathing became painful. His body too? He gritted his teeth. He endured. His cranial organs activated half by themselves. The phenomenon equation lessened the stiffening of his nerves. He looked down at Kia holding his hand. The girl hadn't fallen into a state of panic. It was almost as if she didn't know what was happening. She doesn't know? There's no way she wouldn't know if it she wouldn't know it from five years ago. But right now he appreciated Ki's reaction. Ki, Kia, bro. He could he could avoid being swept up in the situation around him. The people were in a horrible panic. Some screamed, some cried, some fell to the ground and shivered. Some even threw off their oxygen masks and shouted things. There were even some clutching their ears and convulsing. The descending monorail that had just arrived, the one Gi was trying to get on right now. Passengers ran out of it screaming. He'd heard that voice from below him. Therefore, these people were fleeing from it. Kia. Kia. Kia, it's over, bro. <laughs> You're cooked! What? Visit who at daybreak? Yo, it's been such a long time I forget, bro. With Kia's voice behind him, he boarded. He operated the emergency controls, changing it to express. Then he raised the speed, setting the destination to the second water supply ward. He closed the doors before Kia and her words of protest could board. Hold on. Ruha should come soon. Okay, Ruha's gonna take care of Kia. The monorail began to move without any brakes. I have to hurry. I have to get there first. I have a feeling the shadow behind me is screaming, telling me to do that. Hurry! Faster, Gi! Faster, faster! It's over, man. How many months has it been since I last sprinted? I nearly trip as I run out of the monorail. He hurried to the reservoir, heading for Old Man Vonnegut's cooperative residence. The farther he went, the stronger the voice became. Humans with minds strengthened by crack engines. Monsters naturally equipped with psychological management abilities. They all fled from the voice, trying not to be devoured by the terror. His left and right lungs were tightening up from the burden of sprinting, so he strengthened them with his equation. He could keep on running. Finally, I can see the reservoir. And countless cables. There was a chrome blockade that hadn't been there yesterday. The path to the reservoir was already sealed off. The guards looked toward him. It was horrible. They weren't just guards. Upper tier soldiers. Lumps of crack engines sent out by aristocrats. Living machines with enforced city law. The Grand Prince is out to get you, bro. It was orchestrated! He had no choice but to look for a different route. The paved roads no longer went to the reservoir. All passage through it were prohibited. The people fleeing can't get out through this blockade. Then... Oh my gosh. As Guy stood before the blockade, small silhouettes rushed toward him from behind, pushing through the crowd of people. They were Agnes and Francisca. He rapidly confirmed that Vonnegut wasn't with them. Agnes, Francisca,
まだ中にいるんだな分かった So they're So they've already decided to prune people I glare at the upper tier soldier in my way Valuable citizens In other words, young humans seen as beneficial producers for the whole of the city Only they had been chased out of the ward Old men Children The sick and wounded Those people had been left inside the blockade The twins must have been put outside because they were young yet skilled informants Otherwise, they probably wouldn't be here In other words, the city law really is being enforced The pragmatic pruning of lives However, the upper tier wouldn't kill them They'll just abandon them As if they predicted this would happen Just how many people were being pruned? Guy knew it wouldn't be just 10 or 20 Addy knew about this too, what's up with that? The scale would be bigger than that Look at his <laughs> That shocked expression always gets me his old friend was there. Bro. Okay, I guess you can come with me eerily. Eerily, I guess, I guess. He rushed his way from behind the blockade with a few upper tier soldiers seeming to follow him. A few upper tier soldiers? Oh, he's... God damn it! Fuck! That's why. Oh my god. Eerily has been trying to save Gi from this. Been trying to warn Gi. Eerily's been trying. Because he's been working with these guys, bro. Oh. Is this like a... What if... This was like... A genocide of the lower tiers, basically. What if this is just the genocide of all of the lower tiers? And the upper tiers get to live happily ever after? Dog, I don't even know. But, it would kind of explain why Early is working with them. Early, bro. Let's see what you have to say, man. There was no way a single lower tier doctor could hold out against the battle strength of an entire division of city soldiers. And why could he move within this voice? He wasn't like the young twins who barely remembered five years ago. I understand. There was an external crack engine on both of his ears. Standard equipment for upper tier soldiers. An anti-creature engine. <laughs> Wait, city management? So, wait. Remember that city management person? With the horse body? She was all like cutesy and stuff? Yo, she was kinda... Let me stop right there, cause... <laughs> I don't know if I can say that. Her lower half is a horse, so I don't, I don't even know if I can say anything like remotely so... <gasps> Never mind. I simp for Addy, so... <laughs> I, I literally thirst for Addy. And Addy is like... A mix of a cat, so it doesn't even matter. Yo, that city management girl, she kind of, she was kind of bad. Don't tell me she's like, she's, <laughs> I mean, she was kind of bad, but don't tell me she was bad in the other sense. Like, a bad guy, bad girl. I mean, oh, she, oh my god, she can be my bad girl. I mean, what? Oh my, I need to stop, man. I'm way too bricked up right now. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm bricked up. I just went on a whole rant. It's over for you, Gi. It's too late. That's crazy. You really should be on this side today is crazy. That's a hard... Bro, that's a hard villainous line, bro. I guess it's not really... Is he a villain or an anti-hero? Like an anti... I don't know. I'm stupid. 
I'm calling him an anti-hero. I feel like he's more... He just happens to be on the other side and happens to want to look out for himself. And happens to know this grand scheme. I don't know. Let's see what he says, man. Early raised his arms toward the decayed greenery and the muddied second water supply reservoir and to the silhouette he could catch glimpses of beyond it. A silhouette larger than the multi-story buildings, an embodiment of terror. A creature. A natural phenomenon of the city which kills humans to no end. What if? Okay, you know how these mutations are running rampant in the lower tiers? What if this is the genocide of the people with those mutations? And any other person that's killed in the lower tiers is just... It's collateral damage. What if it's that? Because the upper tiers, I assume, are pretty clean compared to the lower tiers in terms of mutations. So what if this is just... Cleansing the lower tiers? Or just cleansing Inganok in general, right? In Eerily's voice, he saw a little glimpse of the med student from 10 years ago. A few hundred thousand people in the city of Inganok. They're living underneath this law. Even if that law was the pruning of lives. Even if that was abnormal by the standards of ten years ago, this was reality. Early's words were the truth. He wasn't mistaken about a single thing. The upper tier soldiers behind him were proof of that. The law and reality. They were just as he said. However, this really was... We got choices? This... None of these choices involve reaching out your hand. This is unheard of, my boy. Alright, let's save. We need to come back to here. So we're gonna have to save, whether we like it or not. It might freeze up. It... 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 Oh. Maybe. It, come on. I don't think it's making it. I might have to skip all the way back here. Uh, uh, I hate saving in VNDS sometimes, man. Oh! Oh, now we good, we good, yes sir! Alright. Um... Yeah, it's there. I bet. Let's say... None of these choices are ones I want.
I'm curious. Let's choose this one and see what happens. No, this changes nothing. What? I don't get this. <laughs> I don't get this, bruh. Silence. The masked clown reborn at the edge of his vision was whispering give up. It was twisting that into him. Leaving only a laugh, the illusion disappeared. Ah, so that was it. Nothing at all had changed. The clown was dancing unchanged at the edge of his vision. He hadn't changed anything. What I must do hasn't changed a bit. That's why, right now, this hand, he'd extend it to the place it should be. Huh? I thought it was a game over. I can't even hold you. He coughed violently. At the same time, the tremors grew larger. His hand shook slightly as it held the pitcher. As the old man violently coughed, blood fell onto the floor. He no longer had the strength to walk to the window. Vonnegut closed his eyes and silently wished for his granddaughter's safety. The giant who destroyed another Tears water supply ward five years ago. He'd heard that it appeared once more. The evacuating fishermen had told him. Were the ward's buildings being destroyed one by one? Various sounds and vibrations told him so. He is done. He is done, bro. My bad, and I was about to drink some water. His consciousness was starting to unravel. He felt as if he had to speak to keep himself together. He couldn't even get out of bed anymore. A few days. He laughed about how far off he'd been. Bro, I can't even get a chance to sip my water. He heard the voice of the girl he'd met yesterday. Even his memory was wandering now. He moved only his eyes. Kia? Why is she here? The girl, black clothes, right there. Too clear to be an illusion. At the old man's bedside. They were pink eyes slightly, slightly, silently gazing at him. An illusion? No, even if it was. What the heck? Kia is just omnipotent, man. たちは兵隊さんが連れ出した。これでいい。あの子たちは立派に金儲けもできる。年のどこにいても大丈夫。残した未練は。The old man quietly told her. There really was no reluctance or terror within him. There was something calm and comforting in his heart. He showed a smile to the illusion of the standing girl so that she wouldn't notice his stabbing pain. Yo! 
That's a new expression. That's a new sprite. We haven't seen that. Present. Ah, my granddaughters must have told her. So that was the pain stabbing at his heart. The old man was now clearly aware of it. Promises were things which must be kept. However, he'd already chosen. His promise from 65 years ago, on that day, at that time. He met her when he nearly drowned as a young boy, a girl in black, different from his illusion. That's right, she was shorter. That's right, her wet black hair was beautiful. Huh? Wait. Huh? 65 years ago? Ain't no damn way. Who are y'all, bro? The girl shook her head. She uneasily told him that no such person was there. Not with words, but with her eyes. But the old man could see her. The young, black-haired girl with a kind expression on her face. Then... A shock echoed through the cooperative residence. The old man couldn't tell if it was the giant closing in or not, destroying everything in its path. The sound of destruction. Something hard. That's me! I mean, what? Ayo, ayo! Then the strange noise of crumbling and evaporating. The old man laid eyes on it. The enormous, hard left hand easily wiped out the second and higher stories of the cooperative residence. I can see the sky. Through the crumbling ceiling. Oh, God. The gray sky lay beyond the demolished ceiling. The eternal thing was obstructed by a warped face. The giant is peeking in. It's moist. Something like a gaze swims over me. This old man and this illusion of a girl. In order to break human lives, the giant moved its face closer while exhaling its rotten, ultra-hot breath. The girl's whisper, whispering voice was shaking. Got me stuttering. From fear? <laughs> Got me scared and shit. It's peering into my soul right now. The giant reacted. It extended its fingers. Its wrinkling fingertips gave off ultra-high temperatures. Anything that touched them would evaporate in an instant. It gave off an air warped with death. Kia, that's what you get, bro. <laughs> a voice I've heard before. It's sharp. Just a slight shock. Fragments flew in every direction. There was a hand stopping the giant's finger. A hand stopping the giant's destruction. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry, Kia. I didn't mean that. <laughs> I said that's what you get to Kia, but I actually felt bad after I said that. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. You got me. You got me. I'm soft. Hmm. The hand blocking it is extending. As if to protect the old man from the finger. Bro, Guy and his persona. Or perhaps to protect the illusion of the girl. The old man called the name. Did he do so aloud? He didn't know. He just screamed. He screamed the other man's name. The man who'd stopped the giant. No, he wasn't producing a voice. The old man screamed even as he coughed up red fluid. Answering his voice. That hand extends. It's over for you, the right hand is extending, forward. But it wasn't just Guy's right hand. A different right hand was extending from behind him, a hand made of steel. It was overlapping with Guy's. Oh my god, that CG. As if stirring, it continued to extend freely. That hand sliced through the high temperature space. It was extending toward the giant's face. Five steel-colored fingers writhed and materialized. Its finger joints 
scraped, making a noise. It gave off sharp metallic sounds like the strings of a lute. What is this? Something was here. Someone was here. That wasn't Guy's hand. It came from someone behind him. Someone was extending a steel hand from behind Guy. The sound of grating steel rang out. Something was behind Guy. Who? What? Something covered in steel was behind him. To the old man, it looked like a shadow. He knew something made of steel was extending a hand from behind him. He didn't have the slightest idea what it truly was. Human? No, this was something else. He didn't know who or what was there. Some great steel entity? No, that wasn't possible. That couldn't possibly be behind him. There was no way that could exist. But, but, the old man knows. Fairy tales are no different from reality. Gi was protecting the old man as well? The steel shadow took on a form. The steel hand moved as if answering his words. The steel hand. It just extended forward. The sound of a clock. Is it time? Is it time? It continues to call. The second hand moves. It stops pointing right at zero o'clock. It is a pocket watch of white silver. It is a pocket watch carried by one man. The golden spiral staircase towering into the darkness. The man standing at the foot of it is none other than the Silver Watch's owner. With his master in the corner of his eye continuing to climb the golden spiral staircase, the man continues to gaze at the watch motionless. The man continues to gaze at the watch and speaks, like a chrome-built, machine-wound doll in an inorganic voice. It is indeed time. They are preying on his downfall right now, bro. Something impossible is occurring. Armor that no blade or bullet could ever penetrate. The sturdy upper tier soldiers were clad in total armor made only of the finest engines. But they were nothing before it. Those machines lived only for the upper tier aristocrats. They didn't even need to sleep. Yet the soldiers quickly lost consciousness and passed out. And they just fell over. So easily. Eerily's face went pale. He'd seen it. What was that? The shadow which rushed out as the upper tier soldiers fell to their knees. A medium fantasy. What is that? What just passed by? What the heck? Did he just instant transmission? The right hand of steel tears through the darkness, covered in a steel helmet, a single light shining sharply. Okay, Gi. He silently extended his right hand forward. He also extended his steel right hand forward as if tracing a path. It moves. 
Yes, this thing moves. It actually moves as I will it. Something seemed wrong with his vision. There was no clown. Instead, he knew that there was a fantastic shadow behind him. He extended his steel arm and saw the same things as him. The large creature peering down at him. One of the 41 deaths. Guy could see it without activating his equation. He wiped away the voice that brought panic. He and Guy glared into the giant's eye sockets. My right hand. It directs the steel hand as if it were my own. This isn't the phenomenon equation. However, somehow it feels real. There was something that he at his back could do. There was something that he and Guy needed to do. What must I do with this hand? I know. The same thing as before. He is cooked! The giant gave a roar at the incomprehensible intrusion. Its heat began to scorch the atmosphere, producing phenomena. Guy could clearly see its scattering death. Guy's right eye had already captured everything about Creature Stone Golem. The high temperatures covering the surface of its hard and supremely massive body. That was death itself. An amal amalgamation of death. Death by incineration. A phenomenon of death capable of evaporating people without a trace. The arms of death rose up. Their targets were Guy and him. The flames burned furiously, destroying space itself. So fast. My eyes can't follow them. Mortal bodies could hardly hope to dodge them, except perhaps for Pukel soldiers with their sharply honed nervous reflexes, or heavy engine humans with nerve reconstruction. Pukel soldiers, I just remembered. Addy is a Pukel, so that's interesting. But even if they'd managed to dodge the fists, they would have been evaporated by the ultra-high temperatures wrapping around their bodies. And yet, he was alive. Guy still lived. He stood there, without even a scratch, in the very air, the giant's heat had melted. Don't cry, come on! He glared at the roaring giant with his right eye. That was probably a cry of panic just now. It destroyed people's cranial nerves, planting seeds of despair, death or insanity. Almost a despair at watching, watching too much Danganronpa, bruh. And yet he was alive. Guy still hadn't died. He probably would have died if this had happened not too long ago. But right now, the steel him was protecting Guy. He wouldn't die, not yet. He focused his mind into his glaring right eye. His right eye saw, saw all of the rampant giants. Creatures are indestructible. Physical destruction is impossible. In the case of Stone Golem, the sole means of destruction is destruction of all joints. Perhaps, or perhaps, people certainly can't do anything to you. Bro, it's embarrassing whenever I slip up on that, because <laughs> this is word for word the same things he said over and over again during these so-called boss battles. The vaporizing death, Gollum, with an epidermis that repelled all attacks and a body protected as if by the gods. Therefore, humans couldn't possibly kill it. The sole means of destruction was destroying all of its joints. Therefore, humans absolutely could not kill it. Bullets and bombs would evaporate before reaching it. However, however, however... My right eye sees as if coupled with my right hand. Tearing apart, melting and wiping out. My right hand is a blade wrapped in flames. This right hand that cleaves beasts in half. The fiery hand of a fairy tale king. His right hand was a blade summoned from an open steel chest. Together with flames of the utmost temperatures, it enveloped Gollum, slicing the beast in an instant. Bro, it is so dark in here. <laughs> I have my lights off. The creature was enveloped and broken down by the high temperature blade before it even had the chance to scream. All of its joints torn apart, fragmented, pulverized. The remnants of that tremendous flame were left behind as if blown apart. The surface of the reservoir's water shook. 
I need some water, man. Oh my god. That might be the last time we hear that. He climbs, he climbs, he climbs. One master climbs the golden spiral staircase. He is the controller. He is the grand prince. He is the fool. The king of Inganok. The magician and scholar who discovered the phenomenon equation. He climbs the golden spiral staircase. One step, one step at a time. Even now, even now. He aims for the peak. He desires that at the highest place. And that which stands at the peak laughs. Even now, even now. <laughs> it lies at the end of the golden spiral staircase. A dark, confined space where the dregs of the king's dreams sleep. He who was trapped within the darkness laughs. Even now, even now. <laughs> he who was trapped within the darkness laughs. Even now, even now. He raises a voice of exaltation and extends his hand. That hand writhes and tears open. Under the darkness, that hand grasps the sky. His left hand tore through the black cloth and showed a little of itself. You're edging me, man! I guess it ain't over. I guess it's not over. All right. There's more to go. No idea what the prince is scheming. But off to Randolph. Deep underground where no one's voice could reach. Beneath all of the city's lower tiers, then even lower than that, Randolph was digging holes tonight as always. The underground madman dug holes while talking with someone who couldn't be seen. <laughs> <laughs> he said, isn't it hilarious that the likes of truth stood in the way of my holes? Hey, yo, what's the truth you got there, Randolph? What's the truth? They got HIV? That's a pretty brutal tr <laughs> That's a brutal truth, man. I mean, yeah, that, that, that would stand in the way of my holes. Personally. <laughs> I don't know about those bug chasers though. Those bug chasers be wildin', bro. Yo, if you haven't heard of bug chasers, bro, do not Google that, bro. You'll be scarred for life. Ain't no damn way. <laughs> Ain't no damn way people really trying to catch them all. <laughs> they really trying to catch them all. The young girl disappeared the next day. Gi and Kia were elsewhere at the time. 
She'd left a note behind and disappeared. Even Ruaha hadn't noticed her leave. Six days passed after that. Six days since Old Man Vonnegut disappeared. He had performed some temporary healing measures with the Phenomenon Equation, so he was certain the man hadn't died yet. But then, he disappeared the night his birthday was celebrated. I'm pretty sure it was night. Standing alone in the boat amidst the darkness, the only one who has the skill to do that is Vonnegut Oji-san. Standing atop a small boat, gazing at the reservoir, the old turtle said that there were a few who testified to that. He was no longer in any state to be standing up under his own strength, and all the people who testified smelled strongly of alcohol, but no one else had been near the reservoir that night. Even the movements of city administration's upper tier soldiers could no longer be heard. However, something was left behind. Ara? Oh. No, no, no! Please don't tell me they're living with us. No! No! What? Me and Addy, bro? Gi and Addy? <laughs> the heck? They'd practically forced their way into the apartment and now Agnes raised with one of her hands to make it stop! This- <laughs> Why is there so many people here? Slap Gi in the face with light wads of cash? Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> Though it was just a bag of thin wads, it made a loud noise and covered up Gi's face. What you know about... Dang bang? <laughs> what you know about that money? What is wrong- What is wrong with these people, bro? <laughs> <laughs> they said we'll ask Addy and friends, bro. <laughs> Addy and friends. I mean, <laughs> Addy and friends is crazy. It's kind of true, though. This is like a whole freaking party in this house. Why is there so many damn people? Wait, why is Gi of no use? What? Oji-chan's already gotten so much better, he can wander all over the place. Okay. O okay. So why are you here? Wait. So, they're not staying here? Thank God! Oh my... Okay, okay. We good, we good. The game isn't crossing into absurd territory. We're good. Bro. Let me cross my... Mm, let me cross my meat on Addy's bazooka is here. <laughs> Hankers! Hank, 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 hank. Oh my god! Me and Addy should do it here right now in front of everyone. I can't even hold you, bro. I don't even care. As they proudly said that, the corners of their eyes <laughs> were shockingly red. A swollen redness from one or two nights of cry- Damn! Kia tried to say something to them, but they turned their heels right away. Okay. At least they're being nice about it. They said that softly, then left, as if fleeing. 
The two ador- What? The two adorable backs disappeared. That's a weird way to describe it. Without even letting her say goodbye. Right after that, the early morning silence returned. Ruha still hadn't woken up. What? Didn't Ruha slap me with money in the face? Wait, nah, that must have been either Agnes or Francisca, because I must be tripping. I thought Ruha smacked me in the face with money, bro. It was Agnes, okay. Why did I think it was Ruha? What is wrong with me, bro? Ain't. <laughs> Because that- I feel like that is something Ruha would do. Like, here is your money, Gi. Just hits him in the face with it. Addy was surely at the Engine Tavern. When they were alone, things naturally became filled with silence. I want to see Addy and Gee talk again, man. They're so cute together. Kyo, what's good, bro? Kia doesn't know, bro. Kia, bro. Let's just say... 10 years ago, on the dot, man. Things went crazy, bro. Satan appeared, bro. He had some fun with some of the... <laughs> he had some fun with some of the villagers here. With or without consent, bro. And just demons just appeared out of hell. Did the same thing and just dipped. And they came and went. And everyone's used to it. What am I even talking about? Just get on with the game, man. Oh my. I'm such a weirdo. <laughs> it is what it is. We're used to loss, man. Why? Why does everyone talk like that? Those two force themselves. Everyone cries when they're alone. Oh, that's a... Wow. That's a CG. That's a CG. Shining teardrops. Pouring out. Never stopping. Teardrops float out of those pink eyes. Even if she tried to hold them back, they just keep coming, one after the other. They traced a line down her cheek, like rain pouring down from the sky and hitting the shutters. Kia. 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 Is she ever going to become accustomed to this? I'm not saying that is like a bad thing. I'm saying like, if... Theoretically, if Kia was... If she experienced the revival, and all the things that happened after it up to this point, would she still be that, you know, shining ray of sunshine? Would she still be that? Or would she be, you know, I guess corrupted along with everyone else? Just apathetic, just used to the rough life here, used to the constant fear of the beasts and all of that, right? I don't know. Part of me thinks she's a normal girl, but part of me also thinks, like, there is, she, there are some very strange things about her. And, 
I don't know. Why can they put everything they have into holding their proud expressions? Kia, you just haven't been here. Oh, this, I actually feel bad. Oh my god. I feel bad when she says that. That's actually, oh. Ah! Feels. Move on, move on. Kia. I don't know. He softly wiped those unending teardrops with his fingers, but they still poured out from beneath her closed eyes. Your teardrops silently fell. They ran down her cheek and fell into the palm of his hand. Many, many of them continued on to the linoleum. That's a new word. Like rain never ceasing to fall. What's a linole linoleum? Google, Google. God, it got me feeling. Oh my. I don't feel so good anymore, man. I feel bad. Oh, it's just the floor. It's a type of floor. Linoleum. Linoleum. I bet. Like rain never ceasing to fall. Her tears. Like those of all the people these past 10 years, never ending, but eventually returning to the city. Ah, ouch. That's a way to put it, man. <laughs> he is the only honest one, man. When has Kia lied? That's that's so factual. That is so true. Wow. She's honest. Oh my god. Stop, 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 stop. Make it stop. Okay, okay, we good. Oh, thank God. I needed this change. I was about to cry myself, man. Bro, early mad as a... <laughs> he mad as a bitch right now. He is... <laughs> he is jealous, bro. By the lake in the second water supply ward, one man's silhouette stepped on the grass. His arms and legs were covered in black. A man who looked just like a shadow. Oh! Oh my god! <laughs> oh. <laughs> he is mad as a bitch! Oh my god! That is, that is not eerily, that is someone, oh, a lot matter. He is livid. So this guy has the clown virus as well. What the heck? Nah, this guy... This guy even crazier than Randolph, bro. This guy loopy as hell. I ain't talking to capture card provider. 
<laughs> Shout out to my boy Loopy! Yes sir, yes sir, the GOAT! Oh, snap! It lies at the end of the Golden Spiral Staircase. A dark, confined space where the dregs of the King's dream sleep. He who is trapped within the darkness laughs. Even now, even now. <laughs> It ain't that funny, bruh. Is, is it really that funny? <laughs> he who is trapped within the darkness laughs. Even now, even now, he raises a voice of exaltation and extends his hand. That hand writhes and tears open. That hand extends toward the sky. Oh, what is that? Oh, what is that? His left hand tears open the blinding darkness and that whiteness. What the heck? What? Oh, hell. Kia. Kia, who are you, bro? Kia, who are you? <laughs> what the? Who is this? I gotta do more censoring. Yay! How exciting. No, seriously, who is this? What is going on here? They going crazy up in the bed. Can you tempt me? I mean, what? Magdal's body gave no react. I bro, <laughs> another new character. No matter how much the impatient man caressed her with his hard hands, no matter how deeply he buried his raging, <laughs> raging organ into her. She didn't even think about it. Magdal just gazed at the ceiling. Even in such a highly decorated brothel, the ceiling looked different from the rest of the room. Barely any effort had been made to make them match. Proof that it was only a cheap brothel. An aged ceiling. She was gazing at it past the shoulders of the man over her. That's crazy. <laughs> Gave me a cheap one. A cheap one is crazy. The man was saying something. It didn't matter. He could say whatever he wanted. Her job was already over. I need me some. Some. Ah, so Melissa, Greg, Snabussy, Snickbussy, you know what I'm saying? Oh my god, I need me some Melissa Greg in my life. I know that Snake Tail can do some crazy things, bruh. She made him feel good in the lounge, and she'd invited him into a room. She was done the moment he pushed her onto the bed. That's cr <laughs> She just gave up, she was like... Do whatever you want. I'm gonna space out. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. After this, nothing mattered. The man could just thrust and climax all. <laughs> that is crazy. Even though he was violently grabbing her breasts, she felt nothing. No matter how many times he penetrated her, she said nothing. This reminds me of a certain character. A certain character. In, um... Sukaheim in Sukaheim Y'all know who I'm talking about if you played Sukaheim She just looked at the ceiling. I'm 
何もこの男と話すことはないくせ The impatient man cursed again, grabbing her rear and one arm as he violently penetrated her. Magdal's body shook. The ceiling lurched. She lurched. Over and over and over again. Her vision warped. Warped. She unexpectedly remembered. The figures of those she'd loved appeared within her warped vision. Two lower tier citizens who received honors from the upper tier. Her husband and son. The two she loved more than anyone else. They returned to her vision. Memories. Oh, um, yo. Yeah. Yo, I hope this man got a discount because, oh my. Imagine. You're getting down on someone like that and they, they're thinking about their husband and murmuring about them. Like, I want my money back, bruh. I hope you got a 90% discount. My lovely Pedro. Damn. That revival really messed her up. Yep. I know you're sobbing. Her warped vision connects to the past. Magdal wept as she entreated, don't show me then. Just for now, stop moving. Oh. Oh. Oh boy. The man's voice was full of rage. It made sense. She suddenly started crying and said stop. He'd be confused or angry, but that was all. A sort of hooting was mixed in. She couldn't tell what he was saying. The man moved faster. Was this stimulating him? He was piercing her like mad, even though she wasn't the slightest bit wet. She was swelling up. Her tears and voice excited the man. All the customers were like this. An impact reached her cheek. That man was fully intent on enjoying this. His voice was delighted as he shook her, her body violently. She did groan when she was bit. Bit? Hit. But the tears still wouldn't stop. Bro, I'm tired. <clears throat> I'm, I can't even hold you. I'm tired. Bro. Bro, bro, bro. I actually have like a functional sleep schedule right now, so like I'm getting tired, bro. <laughs> oh my god. Bro, he is getting off on this. Alyssa, bro. Damn. Oh my... Okay, that voice acting kind of clean! Call for Alyssa, bruh. Oh my, yeah, she's losing it. She is... Damn. I mean, truthfully, if you were in her position, bro... Tuh. Oh my god, I would just... Can I even say that on YouTube? Bro, I would just... Let's just say this, bro. I would take a RJ45 Ethernet cable and plug it in on one end and then tie it into a loop. And then I would just jump, I just 
you know, position my neck into the loop and just jump into it and just lift up my feet, bro. In Minecraft, in Minecraft. <laughs> I, I would not be on this earth anymore, bro. A voice of suspicion. She, she lost everything she loved and she's just being whored out, bro. Every single day, just for her pay, bro. And she's in the lower tiers. So she probably isn't even living well. A voice of suspicion. A, detaste, a distasteful presence. Even so, the man shoved his excited organ back in and made no effort to stop his oscillating hips. The man's movements grew more violent. Her back was being beaten into the bed. Yeah, she losing it, bro. She can't win either way because if she acts disinterested, it's like he will go harder, right? He'll be like, damn you, I want you to feel something. <sighs> Get wet. Get wet for me. <sighs> and then if she like cries and stuff, he's going to be all like, stop crying. Stop crying. It turns me on! Uh, uh, and just smack her around like she can't win either way, bro. I'm ranting too much, bro. I need to get on, I need to get on. <coughs> yeah, she's losing it. She cannot handle this. Yo, I didn't read that. Chapter 6, was it? Chapter whatever the number is. The rain's falling again today. Addy! What's going on? Upon the roof of an information storage building, a black cat was watching the city skyscraper. She is... Let me stop. While looking at the location of tonight's biz, she flicked the ears on top of her head. The puddled rainwater splashed everywhere. That whining bird was nowhere to be seen today. David, no! Oh, if David's dead, bro. Is David dead? Oh, if David's gone. Oh, no. Whispering to herself, she continued to look down at the second floor of the Target building. It didn't seem to be on high alert. She'd made arrangements with two of the hackers. They'd cut the alarms for her. The biz, stealing documents and cash. She'd made it look like a simple burglary Grab the documents, then sell them to an opposing company. Addie remembered a certain letter. A coarse love letter handed to her by a mouse-faced informant. The ciphered words of love were part of her request. It was nothing. This biz was just as dangerous as usual. She inhaled the air, moistened by the rain. There were still a few hours left before she had to act. She wondered whether to keep looking down like this. Then... The wireless telecommunications device vibrated, a small receiving device, a receiver she used mostly for co contacting co-workers. Only the few people she considered her friends knew the circuit number. Ah, <laughs> <laughs>
うん私はどうかってまあぼちぼちさそれなりに野良猫をやってるよそれよりどうしたのさ珍しい君から連絡してくるなんて何かあったあ誰それ大悟草のマグダル聞いたことない名前だけどえ同僚どんどん欠勤が多くなるって知らない知らない知るわけない私がそこにいたのいつだと思ってんのマグダルなんて名前初耳あああそうポセールなんだThe person on the other side of the communicator. The girl I was once colleagues with shut her mouth. How many years had it been since they last spoke? In the past, that girl had been really nice and was easily fooled by men. Now she was going out of her way to contact the runner. Talking about a pukel that had joined recently, there must have been some kind of quarrel. Probably, the low voice tells me. That low, reserved voice told her. For some reason, it made her think of the girl named Kia. Come to think of it, this girl was a lot like her. The way she worried about others. A personality that's hard to live with in this city. Hold on. What if these guys try to contact people outside of Inganok? Like with phones, right? Obviously, they can't walk out, but with phones. Is that possible? Or does the mist kind of interfere with the electromagnetic waves that c o m e s out? I don't. I mean, they do explicitly state multiple times that i n g a n o k is separated from the rest of the world, so. Maybe. You know, the phones didn't have much contact with them, and the, I don't. Dog, I don't even know. I was about to say in the first place, right? The phones didn't have much contact with the outside world in the first place. I don't know. Sounds stupid. Man, I'm tired. This is not. This is not gonna be a long episode. Because I am. I am legitimately sleepy. Well, actually, that depends. I gotta find a nice place to save. I end the conversation. I cut the circuit on the telecommunications device. She was supposed to be watching the location of today's biz, but at some point she started facing straight up toward the raining sky, the sky filled with gray. She let out a short sigh. We're back in hell. 1 a.m. The rain had stopped completely, though it was sure to start up again by dawn. That biz took a little while. Addie saw something she hadn't seen in a long time guard soldiers armed with illegal firearms. She'd been surprised. As a result, her movements had been a little slow. 
The cat's reflexes reacted to the sound and light of the gunfire, but she kept her cool and endured it. She managed to evade them. There was no way bullets would ever hit her. Not from 15 feet away. She'd been two minutes behind schedule. She'd grabbed several of the target documents and shillings. She defeated two of the guard soldiers, and the other two ran away. That's crazy. Then she delivered the documents to the second tier industrialist who'd made the request. With that, today's biz had ended. She received some untraceable shillings as payment. Enough to live frugally for two months. Crack engine tuning and such. The latest wire uh, wireless telecommunications... I can't even, hold on, I'm so tired. The latest wireless communi- tele- Oh my god! No, I'm done, I'm done. Given- <laughs> Given those expenses, it wouldn't last a month. Even so, it was enough. <laughs> I, I really messed that up really badly, alright. Still quite a few shillings. I wonder, I wonder... Yup. Guy's place... For safety reasons, Addie didn't have any particular home. She did have a room, but she mainly used it for storage. She never rented a room to live in. That allowed her to flee at a moment's notice without leaving a single trace. That's why, most of the time, I either nap at a cheap hotel or... Guy's place. Silently, silently. She slipped inside. Silent Biz was Addie's strong suit. Silently, she blended into the night and intruded without a sound. This also worked as a practice run for the next Biz. Kia was surely asleep. The Steel Girl might have been depending on how much crack energy... What? Is that a period? That tripped me up, man. How come... Depending is not capitalized. The steel girl might have been depending on how much engine energy she had left. What the heck? The room's owner might still be awake. It's a minor typo, but it kind of messed me up there. She anticipated that when she snuck in. A snug cooperative residence building. The cheap apartment where that man lived. Until recently, just a place for him to nap. She walked silently through the hallway. She crouched in front of the door. She took out her tools with a practiced hand. She slid them into the keyhole. Two seconds later, it popped open. The door opened silently. She'd done this countless times. I slip inside. The black cat's body slides into the room. Her predictions were off. The steel girl wasn't on the first floor. While infiltrating the living room, Addie recognized a single silhouette standing in the kitchen. Not the room's owner. He would never stand in the kitchen. A little silhouette. Kia? That would be... Yep. Yep, she said it. <laughs> Why are you awake at this hour? ごめん、ごめん。まだ君が起きてると思わなくてさ。こんばんは、キンヤ。こんばんは、アーティ。何か飲むものを用意しますね。食事は気にしないでいいよ。どっちも今は大丈夫だから。それより。はい。どれ。
skeezer. Stop. She's gonna have it in her vocab now, bruh. She's taking it way too literally, bruh. Uh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> no. What if she says, you got me, you got me, like, no way. <laughs> That'd be funny as hell. You got me. She waved her hand at the girl tilting her head. She really could be a princess from the first or second tier. No, she couldn't. Oh, maybe. I mean, if she was sheltered, maybe. The mysterious Kia, standing in the kitchen late at night, quietly preparing tomorrow's breakfast. Her upbringing must have been why she knew so little. And yet, she really was getting used to life in the lower tiers, just like a devoted wife. And yet, she didn't know of the suffering in this part of the lower tiers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're all thinking it. <laughs> Look at her eye. <laughs> Look at her eye, bro. <laughs> It's not even half open, it's like a quarter open. She's like... She can't- She's mad because she can't even deny it anymore. She's done the deed. I clear my throat. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta, I gotta remind myself of what Kia said, bruh. You really are his wife is crazy, bruh. She was at a loss for words. Why did she feel so awkward? Because I slept with Guy? Wasn't this girl sleeping on the second floor at the time? Ridiculous. It was weird for her to even be this conscious of Kia. If she was jealous, she'd be more upfront about it. She tried to put on an adult smile. She constantly tried to fabricate an expression. I really don't think Kia would mind if she knew that Addy slept with Gi. I really don't think she would mind. <laughs> She would be like, yeah, that's par for the course. That's that's normal. What? Why are you saying this is abnormal? This is normal. This is no why are you worried? Like, I feel like she would feel like, bro, I'm. T I can't articulate. I'm tired. Shut up. I wonder, why do I feel so awkward? She softly opened the door. With quiet footsteps, she entered the room. The time was 1:30 a.m. What time is it right now for me, bro? 1.16 a.m. Oh, oh, oh. We're not too far off here. Normally, he'd be up by now. There were no lights in the room. No one was sitting in the cheap metallic chair. The bed. I can see him lying in it. He might have already woken up because of her and Kia. If he was lying down at a time like this, he was probably planning to leave early next morning. Oops, thought Addie. She didn't want to force her request on him if it meant messing up his own plans. Was she being too impatient, perhaps? If he was awake, she'd apologize. If he was asleep, she'd talk to him in the morning. She silently, silently whispered. Addie slipped into Guy's bed. 
She could hear his breath. Addy was aware that he wasn't sleeping. He breathed differently <laughs> when he was asleep. She softly called to him as if imploring. He looked toward her. His eyes had been watching the ceiling, but now they were looking at Addie. Even without the panel of cracking light, she could see the phenomenon equation lingering in his eye. She could tell by the gap when he looked at her, the sensation that her whole body was being looked at. He must have been traveling and healing all day. He'd probably just gotten back. But then I think, if it was possible, I'd like to have the same eye as him. How does my body look to him? Through his equation's eye. Her words muddied. She naturally thought about back when she used to be there. She didn't particularly want to tell Guy about it. Unpleasant memories. Although Guy knew all of it, she didn't want him to remember. Yaman, a former colleague who recently contacted me. They died before she started down Yaman's line of work. That was what she told Addy. Magdal didn't know the causes of their deaths. Were they killed by a wild monster? An accident? A creature? A drug overdose? It could have even been a disease. Whatever it was, the two in the picture were dead. As she spoke that word, she couldn't stop her body from shaking. She remembered that time, the faces of her comrades, when they were killed by the frenzied addict. She naturally clenched the sheets. A little tighter and they would have torn. Huh. It's alright. I'm sure I'm still human. Though I'm definitely feeling regret. I honestly think I'm happy. Why do I feel like that? Even though she'd never met her, Magdal didn't feel like a complete stranger. 
A Pukel who'd lost something precious. Addie feared she might become like her someday. The possibility always existed. Drugs perpetually tempted people, telling them, flee from this horrible reality. You can relive just a little of your dreams. The dreams you lost over these past 10 years. Addie thought she would never fall to that temptation. However, there was always a possibility. For instance, if he... Guy was looking straight into her golden eye, not his Phenomenon Equation's eye. That was definitely Guy's own eye. What is it? You're making a face like you know everything, you irritating doctor. <laughs> Is it time? Is it time? It continues to call. Can I save here? Oh boy. Oh, oh, oh. Do I want to continue? That's tough. Listen, man. I do kind of want to see what the other choices are, so. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, I'm sleepy. Oh, my. After we see what the other choices are, man, I'm out of here. I am instantly going to bed, bro. Hopefully, y'all can expect another episode next week. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Load. I want to see all the choices, man. Just a natural phenomenon. He closed his eyes. Once again, that voice rang out next to him. Exactly the same as the terrible tragedy five years ago. He heard Airely's voice. The twins' sobbing reached his ears, the same as ten years ago. He couldn't answer someone calling to him. Something hot touched his skin. Guy didn't know the nature of it. These ten nightmarish years would end here. That wasn't so bad. It was a fitting ending. The time has come. That's all there is to it. The illusion which should have been at the edge of his darkened vision. He saw the clown once more. Guy had given up on something. He looked up at the city sky with his eyes closed. Yes, just as the gray sky went on forever, the clown said, Welcome back. Game over. Yeah, alright. Alright. Dun dun dun. Hey, what? Hey, what? Alright, now, let's go back. I'll be lucky if it doesn't freeze, but it looks like I'm unlucky. <laughs> doesn't look like I'm very lucky today, man. Alright, I think it froze. We're gonna have to go back. I think. Just give it a few. Yeah, no, I think it froze. Alright, well, I'll see you guys when I am back at that decision. Yes, sir, we are back. Okay. Let's say nothing that important. Nothing that important. He closed his eyes. Once again, that voice rang out next to him. Exactly the same as the terrible tragedy five years ago. He heard Airely's voice. The twin sobbing reached his ears. The same as ten years ago. He couldn't answer someone calling to him. His cranial organs lost their strength. The phenomenon equation he gained during those past 10 years disappeared. His thoughts diffused. So this was the prince of the organs and powers he'd gained. 
Prince Price. Dude, I'm tired. Let me read that again. So this was the price of the organs and powers he gained. These nightmarish ten years would end here. That wasn't so bad. It was a fitting ending. That time has come. That's all there is to it. Yeah. And game over. The illusion which should have been at the edge of his darkened vision. He saw the clown once more. Guy had given up on something. He looked up at the city sky with his eyes closed. Yes, just as the gray sky went on forever, the shadow beneath him said, Goodbye. Tick tock. Notice how the background... What is that background? Hold on. Is that like the giant orb of just black fuzziness that the Grand Prince is climbing towards or something? Dog, I don't know. Man, I'm too tired for this shit, man. <laughs> Alright. Let's go back. I, I'm ending off here, man. I, oh. I am about to have the fattest sleep of my life, bro. I hope y'all have a good day, night, whatever, bro. More Hinganok videos coming through. Um, yeah. Yes, sir. Um, no, uh, yeah. I don't know what the Grand Prince is scheming. I don't know why that fuzzy, mysterious black ball wants Kia. I don't know. Kia, I'm sussing out Kia. Um, I'm sussing out the Grand Prince. Um, I'm kind of sussing out Addy because she knew about that whole thing happening. I'm sussing out the Grand Prince's servant, or whoever the hell that is. I'm out of here. I'll see y'all later, man. Peace. Uh.